Amen. Listen, we're going to get right into today's broadcast. Today we have a lot of material to cover. I want to talk to you today about the importance of breaking the power of strife in your life if you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to understand today that the Bible reveals James, the very brother of Jesus, revealed that where there is bitter envying and strife, the door is open to every evil work. So if you've been living with strife in your life as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ today, this is your time for repentance. Amen. If your prayers haven't been being answered as proficiently as God desires for your uh, prayers to be answered, as you desire for your prayers to be answered, and you've got strife in your life, I've got your answer right here today. Listen, strife will block the spout where the power of God comes out. Strife will block the spout where the healing power of God comes out. Strife will block the spout where the answer to prayer comes out. Amen. Listen, you cannot afford the luxury of living with strife in your life any longer if you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Open in your Bible, if you would today, please, to Proverbs chapter 3. I'm going to move quickly. A lot of material to cover, as usual, in these broadcasts. We're word based in everything that we do here at the gathering, everything we do here on these broadcasts. We are thorough in the Word of God. Amen. We give you scripture for everything. You know, Jesus said in the mouths of two or three witnesses, every word will be established. He said that in Matthew chapter 18. Listen, Moses also said it in Deuteronomy chapter 17, and the apostle Paul said it in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word will be established. You need to have two or three verses of Scripture in context, preferably from the New Testament, for everything you believe in, everything you're preaching and teaching if you're a minister of the gospel, or you shouldn't be believing it and you shouldn't be preaching it and teaching it. We give you two or three confirming verses of Scripture for everything we teach you on these television, radio, and internet broadcasts. Everything we give in our public services, we give you confirming verses of Scripture. Amen? Because that's the first key to proper Bible interpretation, the first key to proper Bible study two or three confirming witnesses in context, preferably from the New Testament, for everything you believe in, everything you teach in, everything that you preach in. Amen. We teach it and we do it ourselves. Amen. We not only give you two or three confirming verses for every doctrine that we teach you, but we require it of our teachers as well. You know, that's a little key that Jesus gave to all of his family to keep us from deception. So we're going to be looking at a lot of scripture here today to confirm to you of a surety that what we're teaching you is biblically based. Amen. Listen, Solomon wrote um, the, the majority of the book of Proverbs, I believe with the exception of the last four chapters, he wrote the majority of the book of Proverbs. Solomon penned uh, over 3,000 Proverbs and over 1,000 songs over the course of his life. You'll find that, I believe, in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 32. You better check my reference. It might be, uh, I might be a little off, but I'll get you in the neighborhood. 2 Kings 4, 32. Uh, the scripture reveals that, pro that uh, Proverbs were written by Solomon. He wrote 3,000 Proverbs and 1,005 songs. All we have that remains of Solomon's Proverbs are 560 Proverbs, and they're found right there in the book of Proverbs. Amen. And we're going to go to Proverbs chapter 3 and look at some of his Proverbs. Look at something Solomon said about strife. Let's pick it up right here in Proverbs chapter 3. Let's start in verse 29, I believe. Amen. Solomon said by the agency of the Holy Spirit, To not devise evil against thy neighbor, seeing he dwelleth securely by thee. Don't get into strife and don't get into conflict with your neighbor just for controversy's sake. You know, some people love to live in strife, amen? They love controversy just for controversy's sake. They love being controversial just to draw attention to themselves, just to be in control of situations, even if it's negative control. And Solomon said that we're not to do that. He said that by the agency of the Holy Spirit, Jesus said not to do it. Peter said not to do it. James said not to do it. It'll block the spout with the answer to your prayer comes out. So if you're striving with your neighbor or with a brother or sister in the Lord or even with an unbeliever, if you're in strife with them today, you're going to want to do everything you can to get that conflict resolved so that the power of God can be poured out in your life as mightily 
as the Holy Spirit would uh, desire to pour His power out in your life. Now, I'm, I'm going to read some more scripture to you here, as I said, but I'm impressed. Here I go again. I'm talking to somebody right now who's involved in strife. You've been letting it go. You've been minimizing it in your mind, in your own estimation, in your thinking, and the Holy Spirit's been bearing with you, bearing witness with you. You need to go back to that party, whether they're the offending party or you're the offending party, and you're going to want to do everything you can to get that unresolved conflict, get that strife out of your life because it's hindering everything God wants to do for you. And as we're going to see from the book of James later in the broadcast, it's opening the door to sickness, disease, poverty, tragedy, confusion, frustration, and failure to every degree. James said, where there is bitter envying and strife, there is every evil work. This is why Solomon wrote by the agency of the Holy Spirit, you don't want to devise evil with your neighbor. You don't want to strive or contend with your neighbor. He said also here in Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 30, he said, strive not with a man without cause, if he has done thee no harm. Envy thou not the oppressor, and choose none of the ways of the oppressor. For the froward is an abomination unto the Lord. By that he means people who don't take God's word seriously. The froward, people who are froward, they turn their nose up at the word of God and they live anywhere that they want. Amen. The froward are an abomination before God. But God's secret is only with the righteous. What Solomon saying here, in essence, is God will not give you revelation of his word if you live with strife and unresolved conflict in your life. His secret, the Bible says, I'm going to read it to you again, in Proverbs 3.32, his secret is with the righteous, or with his children, who refuse to live in strife. God just won't give you further revelation of his word if you live in with strife in your life. There's nothing good about strife. Everything about strife spells filth and stoppage as far as the believer is concerned. Amen. The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked or the striver or the scorner or those who contend unnecessarily with other human beings. Amen. But he blesses the habitation of the just. Surely, the Bible says, God scorns the scorners, those who scorn his word to not strive. God will scorn you if you scorn his word not to strive. But he gives grace to the lowly or to those who are humble enough to repent when they recognize that they are involved in strife. Amen. The wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the promotion of fools. The Bible says if you continue to strive when you know in your heart and you know according to the precious holy written word of God that that is not the will of God for you, that God forbids striving, if you continue to live in strife when you know that it's wrong, you have a promotion coming and that promotion is called shame or public humiliation. Why don't you just repent and judge yourself if you've been living in strife with another human beings or other human beings, plural. Why don't you just judge yourself before you have to be judged? That's what God's calling you today to do. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 11, verse 32, he said, if we would judge ourselves, we would not have to be judged. Listen, God doesn't want to see you have to be judged for striving or living with strife or unresolved conflict in your life, being uh, deliberately a controversial person, one who can never seem to get along with anybody at any time for any reason. God's calling you to judge yourself today in order to spare you having to be judged. He said right there in his word, 1 Corinthians eleven thirty two. if you will judge yourself, you won't have to be judged. Amen. Why don't you just, you know, use your brain. Use the brain that God gave you. Listen to your heart today. You're being spoken to. You're being addressed by the Holy Spirit of God from within my spirit. I'm talking out of my spirit into your spirit by this Holy Spirit, by the agency, the divine agency of the Holy Spirit calling you to repentance today if you've been living with strife in your life. Listen, you cannot afford the luxury of strife anymore. It's a killer. It's a killer. Strife is a killer. It can cut your life short. It can cause you to die prematurely. It'll surely cause you to miss out on all the blessings that God has for you while you're living in this earth during what I call your probationary 
period. I want to encourage you again today, no matter who's wronged you, no matter what someone may have done to you, you can forgive. You can forgive. You can forgive. You can absolutely forgive. As a matter of fact, if you're a born again believer today, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 16 that your spirit is joined with the Lord. If you're born again, your spirit is joined with the Lord and you are one spirit with him. Listen, your spirit is in union with the spirit of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ doesn't strive. Jesus doesn't hold unforgiveness in his heart. Jesus is a forgiver. Amen. Bible also says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Behold, all things are new and all things are of God. The old has passed away, all things are new and all things are of God. And you know, the Bible says, he who loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Listen, if you've been recreated in Jesus Christ, your old man, your old hateful self has passed away and the new love you is what abides now. The love of God abides on the inside of you. The Bible says in 1 John 4, 8 that God is love. God lives on the inside of you. That means that nothing abides in you but the spirit of love. No matter who has hurt you or someone that you love, the Bible says the love of God, Romans 5, 5, if you want to look at that in your Bible, the Bible says, Romans 5, 5, the love of God has been shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost who's been given to you. What I'm attempting to say to you today is this, there's nothing but love on the inside of you. If you've been um, uh, delivered from the kingdom of darkness, Colossians 1, 12 and 13, you've been delivered from the kingdom of darkness and translated into the kingdom of the Son of God's dear love, which you have been if Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. There's nothing but love on the inside of you. If you're striving with other human beings, if you're believing the devil's lie that you hate someone for something that they've done to you, you need to hear me here today. You don't hate anyone. A born again human being is not possible of hating anyone for any reason at any time. If you think you're hating somebody, if you think that you really do hate someone, that's just your goofed up head. That's just your squirrely mind that needs to be renewed on the Word of God. That's why Paul said to the Romans in Romans 12 verse 2, he said, don't be conformed to the ways of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that's what I'm attempting to help you do here today, to get your mind transformed and renewed to the fact that there's nothing but love on the inside of you for no matter what anybody has ever done to you, no matter how severely, how sorely you may have been mistreated, you I'm not, it, you don't hate anyone. It's not possible for you to hate anyone anymore. There's nothing but love on the inside of you. The Apostle Paul told the Romans in Romans 5.5, 5, the love of God's on the inside of you. That's your head telling you you hate somebody. If you'll just listen down on the inside, you'll realize, you know, I don't. I don't. I don't hate anyone anymore. It's not, I know I despise some of the things that people do to me, but I don't despise people anymore. I love people. That's one of the keys to knowing that you're born again. The Apostle John wrote in 1 John chapter 3, we know that we're born again because we have love for the brethren. Listen, no matter who has hurt you today, you don't hate anybody. Listen deep down on the inside, in your belly, in your spirit, what Jesus called your matrix, the deepest resource of your being. If you listen down deep on the inside, you realize today you don't hate anybody anymore. There's nothing but love in you for human beings. Amen. Now, I know some people can do the most awful, hateful things to you. We've had people do things to us and say things to us about us that just aren't true, spread rumors about us, slander us, and try to destroy us in ministry and try to put a mark on us. Other pastors, ministers, even Christian people, you're going to have other, you're gonna, probably the biggest problem you're going to have as a believer staying out of strife is with other Christians, baby Christians who never bothered to renew their minds on the precious holy written word of God. We have had other ministers and other uh, Christian people do the most hateful, cruel things to us, to myself and my wife, accuse us of the, of, of the most despicable crimes before God, accuse us of adultery and homosexuality and theft and deception and everything that they can to get other people to, to stop 
listening to us as we preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. But I have to tell you, I listen down on the inside concerning my persecutors. I have to tell you, there's nothing but love on the inside of me for them. I don't hate them anymore. I, I mean, I don't hate anybody anymore. It's not possible for me to hate these people, no matter how despicable these things are that have been done to my wife and myself, and it's not possible for you to hate anyone as a born-again believer, no matter how despicable you may have been treated. If you listen on the inside, you'll discover that the love of God has been shed abroad on the inside of your human spirit by the Holy Spirit who lives on the inside of you, and you really don't hate anybody anymore. That's your head giving you a fit, amen? Just open your mouth and tell your head to come in line in Jesus' name with the written word of God that says the love of God has been shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Ghost who lives within me. I don't hate anymore. Amen. Let me just tell you what striving will do with the Apostle James said striving will do to you. Let me just read the scripture here. We're running out of time in this broadcast already. Amen. But God's talking. God's talking to some of you. Believers in particular, I'm talking today. Now all people, no one can afford the luxury of living in strife. But even if you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, even if you don't believe that this book I hold in my hand called the Bible is the inerrant word of God, even even still, you cannot afford the luxury of living in strife. It brings a curse into your life, amen? It sets an operation against you, what the Apostle Paul called the laws of sin and death, whether you believe it or not. Striving will rob you of prosperity in this earth. Striving with other human beings, not being at peace with other human beings as much as it's possible within you, will cause you to live a life of sickness and disease and poverty, and it will even bring you to an early grave, whether you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ or not. But I'm talking in particular today to believers, to people who do believe the Bible. You need to understand what James, the half-brother of Jesus Christ, wrote in the Bible about strife. James said in uh, James chapter 3 and verse 13, I'm going to read it quick, got a few verses here and only have a few minutes left of time here. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good manner of life his works and his meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. We would say today, don't kid yourself. There's no blessings of God available to you if you live with strife in your life. Amen. He said, glory not and lie not against the, the truth. If you have bitter envying and strife in your heart, you're in deep, well, you're in deep doo-doo. Amen. That's a good way to say it. You're in big trouble. Amen. This wisdom, the wisdom that says that a believer in Jesus Christ can live with strife in their lives, this wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. See, there's two kinds of wisdom. There's the kind that comes from heaven, it comes from God, and there's another kind that's puked right up out of the bowels of hell that James said is demonic and devilish, earthly and sensual, and it's the kind of wisdom that says as a Christian, you can live with strife in your life. It's okay. God will still bless you. That is not true. I'm reading to you from James, the very half-brother of Jesus. He grew up with Jesus. He learned a few things growing up in the same household as Jesus. James wrote, by the agency of the Holy Spirit, for where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every, every, every evil work. You need to hear me today, believer. Amen. If you have envying, bitter envy, strife in your life, unresolved conflict in your life, you need to go back and you need to get at peace as much as it's possible with every human being that you've been striving or contending with. Because until you do, James said, you have opened the door to confusion and every, every evil work. Well, what would every evil work be? Well, you can find that out if you want to go read Deuteronomy chapter 28. You can find the blessings of obedience in Deuteronomy chapter 28, 1 through 14. And then you can also find the blessings for disobedience or the blessings for striving with other human beings when the Bible says not to in verse 15 through 68. And you won't like what you read. You will not like what you read. I'm going to encourage you. Go on over there and read it. If you've been thinking, if you've been believing the lie, if you've been yielding to the demonic 
type of wisdom that says as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're safe with strife in your life. You go over there and you read Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15 through 68, and you find all the curses for those who disobey this precious holy written word of God. I'm going to tell you again before we close this broadcast, if you have strife in your life, you're going to want to get it out. If you need someone's forgiveness, you're going to want to go and seek that forgiveness. Amen. If you have unresolved conflict in your life, you're going to want to go back and resolve that. Now, if you go to the other party and they won't receive you, the ball's in that court and you're safe with God but you at least have to try. It doesn't make any difference whether they receive you or not. It only matters that you obey God and you move to resolve the conflict, to resolve the strife in your life. If the other parties won't receive you, well, God sees your heart. He sees that you tried to do what you could and the other party didn't receive you. They have free will. You just keep praying for them now. You keep walking in love toward them. And if they won't judge themselves, they will be judged, but not by you. It's not your job to judge them. It's your job to judge yourself. 1 Corinthians 11.32 Judge yourself and you won't have to be judged. I'm going to say it again. If you go to the party or parties that you've been striving with, seeking forgiveness, trying to resolve things, make everything right, and they won't receive you, it's no longer your responsibility. You did all you could. The ball's in that court. It's between them and God now, and you have made peace with God. Amen? Let me just read it, finish what James said right here. He said, the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of those who make peace. If someone won't receive you, when you try to get the unresolved conflict out of your life, when you attempt to make, uh, uh, make amends with individuals who you've been striving with, if they won't receive you, the responsibility is no longer yours. Amen. Now it's theirs, but you must pray for them. Let me just read for you Matthew 5, 44, when Jesus talked about strife. He said, I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and he sends rain upon the just and the unjust. Jesus went on to say, if you love them which love you, if all you do is love those who love you, and you don't love those who don't love you, he said, what reward do you have? What reward do you have? See, he's talking about a reward here. He's talking about rewarding you if you'll obey him and go and get that strife fixed. Get the unresolved conflict out of your life. Peter said, if we refuse to exchange cursing for cursing, if we refuse to exchange reviling for reviling, if we exchange blessing for cursing, we will inherit a blessing. And that's what this is all about here today. Amen. This is why the Holy Spirit's put it on my heart to speak with you today. This is why he has you be uh, standing before that, uh, that uh, computer monitor, that television uh, screen, listening to the sound of my voice as I speak to you today by the precious Holy Spirit of God, encouraging you Get the unresolved conflict out of your life. Get the strife out of your life. If you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ and you're praying and you're believing God for blessings, for financial blessing, salvation for your family, healing for your body, uh, wisdom for yourself, uh, uh, success, and whatever you put your hand to, you're going to have to get the strife out of your life. You're going to have to go back to those whom you have offended and ask for forgiveness. If they won't forgive you, that's no longer your problem. But you're going to have to get up off your backside and go to people. Call them on the telephone. Write letters. Uh, make nose-to-nose, toe-to-toe contact with individuals asking forgiveness where you've wronged people. Get the strife out of your life, and this will be the greatest share of blessing in your life personal history. Let me just encourage you again. You cannot afford the luxury of living with strife and unresolved conflict. You've opened the door, James said, to every evil work. That includes premature death. So just praise be to God. Use good sense. Amen. Use uh, good wisdom. Judge yourself, the Bible says, and you won't have to be judged. This is Pastor John Hamill. We're out of time. Be blessed in Jesus' strong name.